Greetings YouTube! Today we have a very special vacuum. We have a Compact, uh, or TriStar as these are known. This one's from 1979. And go ahead and hit that thumbs up button if you like the channel. And definitely hit that subscribe button with the notification bell. We do videos every Wednesday. Though this video is going to air on Saturday, but that's going to be a temporary thing we're only going to do for the next month. So, let's get into the meat and potatoes of what's in front of us. First of all, it's made in the U.S. And we all love stuff made in the U.S. But this was a quirky vacuum made from a special time. Like I said, it's a quirky time from a quirky area, the 1970s. So other than the flower power on the side, the markings are just going to be compact Electra. Um, and I have added a um, exhaust filter from a newer model and that is uh, to help with allergies. I've also sealed up some bits with silicone that would normally leak. So let's talk about some of the quirky things about this. First of all, it's a huge canister. I mean, it's big, but it maneuvers very well until you push it over and then it can capsize. Um, the other thing about this canister is it has one of the strangest on and off switches I've ever seen which we're going to talk about that right now. Zoom in here. So, one of the strange things is the quick release on this model. You actually pull the hose off and that's how you get to the cord. Like so. And then once you unravel this, go ahead, and you have a nice 30 foot cord or so, so you can do quite a bit of your house like that, but the switch is in such an odd, odd position. I'm sorry for that going out of frame. Um, the switch is right there. It's also your cord hook. Very, very strange. And then this you give kind of a half twist if you see the way that that's shaped right there. Now. We open this up, inside we'll show you that it's got an empty bag. We have a cloth bag, and then yet another filter. So that's what's on every TriStar, that's maintenance for them all. Just give you an idea, every compact TriStar. And then, again, additionally on this particular one, an example, we have this mushroom, which is a multi-layer, it's not quite HEPA rated, it's just a microfilter. We have a sponge for sound absorbance in carbon. We have your microfilter medium. And I'll put a link in the description showing the uh, filter test on that. Uh, or actually, maybe I can splice it in. Uh, and then we have the charcoal filter itself right there. And that all comes apart and seals up. And normally you'd say, oh, that's good. But you actually change this as a whole assembly, which would screw on and off here. Now, in the earlier models, they used to exhaust in the bottom, or they would exhaust off the side. This one has a straight exhaust actually up. And then the uh, door is put on at the angle with the the pipe would actually sit in there straight up. So it's going up that way, and then once it gets in the filter, then it's actually going that way. Kind of a strange cork. Got these nice heavy duty wheels. And again, this one was sealed up with silicone. And the other thing about these is there's no exposed wiring. On the newer models, there's actually a piece of metal over where the wiring would be. So. That, of course, is a little bit interesting. So, give me an idea what that is. So that is the vacuum. Now, I do have an aftermarket hose. Uh, so this would originally come with like this uh, grip with the plastic right here, but everything else is pretty much how it would have been. So when we get to the Electro Brush, which is Mark Turbo Brush, you notice there's a height adjustment, but nothing's happening. Even when we put this down, nothing happens. So that just bleeds air. 
And then of course there's a wire going in and out of here so you can tell that it is actually, in fact, an electric brush from Eureka. Now it's kind of cool in this is it's got these free floated wheels. Uh, no front uh, wheels, so this is not bare floor safe at all. And then we have these uh, nice brush strips from this VG2 style brush roller and then it just takes like a rainbow or a Eureka belt. A lot of these were made just kind of funny. So, you just walk that on there. I'll walk it on a little bit more in the center. Yeah, I'm just making sure nothing's going to rub, nothing's going to burn off. And it looks, even though it's a little bit more to the side than I want, everything looks great. So next, so that is the brush. It comes with the canister. Now the other thing that I have with this, that I don't think a whole lot of people have, So I also have all the accessories. For the most part, I'm missing a airflow glide. I say glide because it does glide there um, for the upholstery tool. But there's the upholstery tool. There's the dusting brush, very Kirby-like. And there's the cover that would normally go on the back of the vacuum over there. We have a uh, the crevice tool replacement, genuine, but as you can see, it doesn't have that fun sparkle to it. Now, the bare floor tool right here. Let's set the tray down. This is the gem because this is cast aluminum. It does tilt. You have interchangeable brush strips. And you do have a small relief there for big objects. And then we have a rug tool that snaps on there. So very, very cool. And that just snaps off with that indent. So very, very cool in terms of what that comes with. So you'll have to excuse the shadows. The sun's starting to come down over here. We're running out of natural light. So we're going to go ahead and let's vacuum with it.
normally would stand up by itself, but because uh, that detent's a little worn, it tends to fall over. But I have to say, that is a pleasure to use. How does it do on stairs? Because that's something I always seem to test. And you can see it's balanced nicely on the stairs, but it's actually kind of awkward. But we're going to use one of my favorite upholstery tools of all time, uh, which is this guy right here. As you can see, nice, nice touch there. So, see how it does. Well, it's definitely manageable on the stairs. Upon vacuuming with this, you notice I have boots on now. The thing is with this vacuum is as you're vacuuming, going along, it's going to hit you. This big, uh, it's not aluminum, it's a aluminum uh, alloy they made for this machine. But this big metal body coming along, and God knows what speed this thing is moving at, but it's, it's about running speed. Uh, that's going to hurt you. So if you were a housewife in the 70s, cleaning in heels as you should, I don't know how they did. They must have broken a lot of heels. Uh, but the maneuverability of this machine, the wheels are so good, that just catching up to you, it can hit you. Now that's an exaggerated movement, of course, but you get the idea. Now we're going to do that at normal speed to give you an idea of what's happening. So I'm backing me along. And it's still hitting me. With some force. Let's do that again. So if you're backing me along, you just give it a tug. It hits you with some force. So that's kind of a criticism of this design. Now if you're not familiar with our uh, pickup test, I'll explain to you. We have breakfast cereal, flour, cat litter, and some pet hair pulled from a bagless cyclone. So that is what is in our pickup test. So we're going to go ahead and try it with the proprietary rug tool. And back in the day, this is all you would get was this setup. So let's go ahead and give it a try. So we're going to go ahead and see what the rug tool did. And as you can see, a little bit of hair stuck in the lint picker. Nothing stuck here. Uh, actually, except for the cat litter again, that did fantastic. Uh, I mean, I guess it shouldn't come as a surprise uh, knowing the specs on this machine, but it just, it amazes me that this clip-on Tool. Oh, there was a little breakfast cereal left in there. Uh, tool thing, clean carpet from the outside appearance, as good as the rug sweeper. Now my question is, let's push this along and see how easy it is to push.
Okay. So that is so much easier to push on this carpet than the Mila style tool. Um, so I'm really amazed. So we'll So we're going to do a pickup test. You'll have to excuse the light. And let's take a look and see what it does. As I've discussed, if nozzles are not round, they often do not pick up like they should. So, you can hear some of that cat litter got stuck in the nozzle. Now the thing that we're going to be most interested in, how did it actually pick up? Well, let's take a look and see. Well, I can feel a piece of cat litter that was kicked up. Other than that, everything is, looks like it pretty well deep cleaned. Um, as we know, this machine does very well in the working water lift test, um, or working vacuum. Let's see what it does with the rug tool. So just below 40. So it's a little bit more powerful than a Kirby or something like that. Uh, about as powerful as a Mila, uh, according to our uh, working vacuum gauge. So that's amazing for the 1970s. <laughs> bare floor test. Bear with me with the noise. Well, that did, wow, uh, except for a little bit of this I missed, yeah, just in one section, that, that was amazing, that really uh, cleaned in the grout even, wow, not even a whole lot of stuff stuck to this, so that tool really helped uh, direct the airflow properly, wow. If you've sat through this whole review, consider giving it a thumbs up, and uh, definitely check out our Patreon where it help we help support the channel. 
I want to talk about a few final closing thoughts about this TriStar. And I think the first, uh, let's talk about the elephant in the room. Of all the vacuums I've used from the 1970s, uh, this stands out. This stands out over a lot of the 1980s designs. I think in the early 90s it was pretty much killed off, but it really stood the test of time, and it really, for a 1930s design, uh, the fact that they're still kind of nursing this design with a different body, basically, along, really shows something about the vacuum. Um, and I want to talk about its usability today. So I kind of, you know, mentioned its maneuverability and how it's going to nip you in the heels. Okay. Well, if you could overcome that, uh, there are some really cool things. I want to talk about how this compares to some newer machines. Let's use my sloppy camera work here. And let's talk about this, because this was an under-the-bed monster. So, the Vissel work that I have here, the EBK360, is known to be a low head. And just because not all of you are going to know what the EBK360 is, So it's about four and a half inches. This, at its tallest section, is a little over uh, three inches and a quarter. So that makes this, when we want to get under something, really versatile. Now you don't have the swivel neck, the lifetime belt, or any of the features. In later models this would grow in its height. But in this form, wow, that's really handy. That's a big thing. Again, which makes this such a, a contender for use and why some people still today choose to use this. Now, I have to say, these pigtails, they're fucking annoying. When you're not used to this and having to plug, unplug, worrying about the gap. And if you're not familiar with the gap is, I'll show you the gap. When this is all the way connected, there is a little bit of a gap there. And, yeah, that's 110 volts. That wouldn't be fun. I can't imagine in Europe where it's 220 how that is. Now, later ones, they did put a like a cover on that, and they did solve that. Um, so let's talk about the body. And I forget what this is made of. I really do. Uh, I'm sure somebody will comment below because it was some super material at the time. So we're going to undo this, and let's see what it picked up. Now, I did this the top floor of my house, real quick. Uh, I did both the bare floor and the carpet, and I vacuumed yesterday just today with the central vac. So you guys are going to see one good days of dirt from my house. <laughs> we have a dirty house. I mean, between the dog and the cats and all that. You know, I take it back. This black hair, we had a guest cat staying in the room, and I hadn't vacuumed that room why that cat was in. That cat is no longer at our house. So that's where the majority, yeah, it's, there's a lot of black fur in there. So that's where the majority of that maybe comes from. So that might have not been a fair assessment uh, on my part. But I will have to say, compared to all the other vacuums I have tested in the house, this has done extremely well in terms of power. In fact, I would say the power is just, just excellent. I, no complaints on power. Uh, my only complaints are how heavy it is and how bulky this design is uh, when we talk about modern vacuums, especially if I compare this to something, a uh, full caster system like a Cebo, a Mila, a Nail Flisk, a Rainbow. Uh, even that Watermatic maneuvered a little better than this. Uh, but again, this maneuvered better than like an Electrolux or something did at this time, so it definitely wasn't the worst. As always, uh, Thank you so much for watching, uh, and please thumbs up the video, and join us on Patreon. Fafa. He's about to get a surprise. <laughs>